Hey everybody, this is going to be a quick and easy tutorial for how to make cinemagraphs on your phone. In case you didn't know, a cinemagraph is a really cool kind of moving picture. They're sometimes called living photos. They're different to videos because most of the scene is a photograph and therefore still, except for just one or two elements in there that are showing movement. Usually that movement moves in a seamless loop, so the clip kind of never ends and you can keep playing it over and over. They can be beautiful and moving or kind of uncanny and creepy and they're also really great content because they grab people's attention. I make most of mine using my phone. If you know me, I do almost all of my work for Instagram on my phone. I like that I can do it from bed or in a cafe or wherever I am shooting and I can share things in real time. If you have a computer with Photoshop installed on it, you can also make them on that. It is a lot more complicated and involved as a technique, so I'm not going to cover that today. We're just going to look at how you can do it on your phone. In my case, that is an iPhone 6S, and I currently have a really broken screen. So I'm going to run through the three different ways that I make cinemagraphs on my phone. The first one is the real way, and the other two are kind of a cheat. For the, all of them, you'll need an app, and the app for the first method is the most expensive, and that one is... So Flixel is free for a demo version that puts a watermark over your finished result. The full license costs around $200 in the Apple Store, which I know is a ton of money for an app. It does come with the desktop version of the software and you can host things on their website, which makes it a bit better value, but it is still really kind of a Photoshop level of investment. Um, the other apps I'm gonna talk you through are much cheaper, but just watch through this part of the tutorial either way, just so you have a proper understanding of how cinemagraphs work. So it's actually super duper simple. For a true cinemagraph, you need to start by taking some video. So set up your phone or camera on a tripod and record whatever action it is you want to capture. It has to be on a tripod or at least sitting or resting against some sort of solid surface because even the tiniest bit of movement will ruin it. So rest it on a window, stick it in a water glass, whatever you need to do. I've got mine here on a tripod attached to the ceiling, like one of those bendy gorilla tripods. So once you've got your video, just import it into the Cinemagraph app. The thing I usually do is I just trim the clip down to size. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff at the beginning and the end where I'm climbing up and hanging my phone from the ceiling and just try and look for a bit of a loop of movement that I want to include in the finished Cinemagraph. That little arrow marker across the top, that selects what your still frame is going to look like. So you can choose any of the frames. And I'm looking for one where my arm and the T look nicely placed because those aren't going to move. So then we go over to this. This is the editing part. So the way the app works is it paints this purple mask over the entirety of the clip and you use the brush tool to just delete that mask over the area of movement that you want to show. So that's what I'm doing here just over the leaves outside the window. The eraser then if you make any mistakes you can just go back in and kind of repaint the purple mask back over the top. Um, anything that's under purple will stay still like a photograph from the still frame you've chosen and anything where you erase the purple will show video and show you the full range of movement in the part of the clip you've selected. I think that's a bit counterintuitive because you are rubbing out the mask with the brush and painting it back with the eraser but it works. Once you've got your head around it it's okay. So then I'm just going to re-tweak the clip length just to try and look for a smooth transition when it ends and when it begins again. You can either set it to bounce, which means once it reaches the end of the clip, it replays it in reverse, or you can set it to repeat and it will try and fade one end of the clip into the next. If you're gonna go with that, you need to mess around with the crossfade, but I find for anything that's got a natural movement like this with the trees, it's usually better to bounce instead of to fade because the leaves will never line up in the same place twice. So just tweaking and playing with those settings until I'm happy with the results. And then I'm going to go in and just improve my masking that I did down here. So you can zoom and if you have a stylus, you can really neatly get in against the lines. This is just me with my fingertip. Um, so it's a bit more smudgy, but because I'm only going to share it really on Instagram and possibly on my blog, it's not going to be studied in any great detail. It's just kind of a bit of fun, spontaneous content most of the time. And then kind of zoom out, have a look how it's looking. I think those leaves on the window ledge probably need to show a bit of movement. They look a bit too unnatural that those ones aren't moving. So let's just brush over those as well until I'm happy with the result. Then once you're done, you just save it to 
your camera roll and you're good to go. One thing it will ask you to decide is how many repetitions of the animation you want to save your clip with. It gives you recommendations for different social media. I kind of find that the longer ones work better on everything. I think possibly the recommendations on there are out of date. So go for around about 20. The second method is using an app called Lumio. This is a newish app, I think. It's, I've been seeing people use it over the last sort of six months, especially. And it's really a cheats way of making cinemagraph because for this, you don't actually ever have to capture the movement or make a video. Instead, you can use the various effects that are in the app to animate a still photograph that you've already taken. So let's have a go with this picture I've taken of my kettle and a cup of tea. So this was steaming, but I didn't have a tripod. There was no way I was going to be able to take a cinemagraph at the time. So I'm just going to import this straight in and add the smoke effect. Steam effect, I should say. And you can then just drag and pinch and resize that and then fade it right down. I find most of the effects look a lot more authentic and believable if you manage to fade them quite a bit. Something like that. Now, one of the nice things you can do in Lumia is add a second effect. So for this, I actually quite often will just add the same effect again to just really reinforce it. And by resizing it, you avoid too much repetition in the pattern so it doesn't look too much like they're overlapping. Also can change the fade a little bit on this to give it a bit more depth and try and make it look like there's a bit more going on. Then once you're done, you just save that in whatever format you're going to want to use it. So one of the criticisms I have of Lumia is that I think some of the effects can look a little bit fake and especially because as increasingly more and more people use them, you start to recognize them when you see them on other people's Instagram accounts or whatever, the animation becomes familiar. So let's just try it with this one. This is a scene, a snow scene that I captured the other day. So this is their snow effect. And even you can see, even when I'm fading it, it still looks pretty artificial. Um, there is a different snow storm effect as well, which is this one. Maybe that's a little bit better, but I'm still not completely convinced that that's gonna that people are gonna really believe that I captured that in the moment. So for my purposes, which is faking cinemagraphs, it's not always the best. We'll save that one for a comparison point and we'll see if we can do something better in the third app we're gonna look at. So for the third technique, we're going to use an app called VidLab. But to start off with, you also need an ordinary video editing app. I use iMovie. There's loads of free ones available. And what we're going to do is just import a picture. So we'll use that snowy one again and make it into a still clip. So literally just 10 seconds of that photograph with no effect sitting still on the frame. Save it in one of the higher resolutions. And then I can import that straight into VidLab. So this works a lot like Lumia, except you get to add your effects over the top of a video. So for a cinemagraph effect, you want the video to be still and you're going to add the animation over the top, which is why we do that first step in iMovie. The main advantage to using this instead of using Lumia then is that I think some of the effects are a little bit better. They, these are purchased effects. I think I probably spent around about five or six pounds total buying all the ones I have. But you can already see, hopefully, that that snow effect is just a little bit more convincing than the one we were getting in Lumia. And it's also less familiar to people, so people won't recognize it when they see it on my account. And that is it all done. So you are ready to go and upload that onto Twitter, where it will play automatically, or on Instagram, or even on your blog. And I hope that that was useful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to get back to everybody. And if you have a go at making a cinemagraph on your phone, I would love to see it. So tag me on Instagram or uh, drop me a comment so that I can come and have a look. If you want to follow me, I'm at me and Orla with underscores on Instagram. And I have tons of free Instagram advice and phone photography tips on my blog, which is meanola.co.uk. I'll stick all the links in the caption section below. Thank you so much for watching.